This is La Feminista Chismosa, the feminist pop culture podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Renee Limas, and I will be exploring all the juicy chisme of pop culture from a Latina feminist perspective. OMG, did you watch that episode last night? Let's talk about it. Hello, hello, hello. So it's me, Dr. Renee Limas. You know me of Las Doctoras podcast. And I'm here to introduce you to a new podcast that um, Las Doctoras is producing um, and that yours truly will be hosting. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the podcast is and then um, as well as like what the inspiration behind it is. So first of all, um, you know, those of you who listen to Las Doctoras podcast know that I love to talk. (laughs) Um, I've always loved to talk. I think podcasting has been a gift in that way to give me an outlet to express myself and um, to get all the talking (laughs) that I want to do. My mother has stories of me as a kid, like in kindergarten, um, you know, getting in trouble for talking too much and they would move me somewhere else like by myself and I would still be talking because I would just talk to myself. So clearly, I love to talk. Um, So again, podcasting has been great for that. So that being said, I was like, I can't get enough of podcasting. (laughs) So one podcast isn't enough. Here I am doing another one. Um, And this one is really going to be centered around my love of pop culture. So I've always loved pop culture, always loved media, TV, film, Um, It was just always something that I loved as a kid. I mean, like, who doesn't, right? But um, but it was always something I loved as a kid. And um, I was, you know, those of you who know me know that I was um, a journalism major in undergrad. So, and I remember, like, advisors and stuff would ask me, like, well, what kind of journalism do you want to get into? And, of course, you know, thinking, like, that I would say something like, news or, um, you know, politics or something like that. And I was always like, I want to do like fashion and entertainment. (laughs) Um, and I think sometimes it was perceived as kind of like superficial or whatever. Um, and we all know, right. Or anyone who knows me know that I didn't actually end up in journalism per se, right. Life took me in a different direction, um, you know, pursued a PhD in ethnic studies, now women and gender studies professor. Um, and so um, even though I didn't um, become a journalist, obviously pop culture, fashion, entertainment is always something that I've loved. Um, particularly, it was something that I really kind of dove into in grad school. And I always really like to tell the story because you know, when I was in grad school, so much of my life, I am, you know, in like heavy theory, heavy theoretical spaces and, you know, having to read and write and, you know, be in classes and analyzing. And there was just a lot of like, always in my head, you know, doing that like intellectual work. And so when I got home, I wanted to be able to shut that off. I wanted to be able to just get lost in something. And, um, And TV and particularly reality TV allowed me to do that. Um, And so I just, and even before I was in, well, no, always in grad school, (laughs) I'm thinking like I fell in love with real, with like the real housewives when they first came out, but I was in grad school (laughs) at the time. I was in grad school for a really long time. Um, Anyway, and so just, you know, diving into to all things reality TV, and I'll probably do an episode on why um, I think we as a culture, not just myself, really gravitate towards reality TV. But um, but needless to say, I, yeah, anything, you know, Real Housewives, Bravo, um, I definitely consider myself a Bravo-holic, like a lot, most of the reality shows that I watch are, are on Bravo, but there are some that I've kind of like, eh, I don't really watch that one anymore, or um, just, you know, 
it's not, I'm not like watching everything when I don't have time to watch everything, but you know, there's just some that I'm like, mm, not so much. And I also like to say that I tend to draw my line <laughs> in certain reality shows. Like I love reality shows. I love reality TV, but not everything. Right. Um, like the Kardashians were never really my thing. I mean, I saw a few episodes here and there. Um, although I will say that I did recently watch the first two seasons of their new show on Hulu. So I never watched, um, their show when it was like on for what, like 10 years on E, you know? Um, and I mean, I get other than like in passing, maybe a, a half an episode here and there. But when they went on Hulu, you know, Curiosity got the best of me. And I did watch the first two seasons. I haven't watched the most recent season. I've got a lot to say about the Kardashians. So again, for another episode. But, um, but you, yeah, I saw you know, the Kardashians weren't super my thing oh, oh, up until recently. And then like The Bachelor. Um, and I have a lot to say about The Bachelor too, considering like I never really <laughs> watched it. I've got a lot to say about it. But um, so there's like, I'm not a reality fan of everything, right? But definitely reality TV has kind of been my thing. Um, and oftentimes, again, it's, it is that kind of like, mm, allows me to like shut off my brain, right? Shut off my conscious brain and I can get lost in other people's stories and other people's lives. And um, again, there's so many reasons why we love reality TV. That being said, um, you know, even though it was a way for me to kind of be able to turn off that analytical brain, you know, that I was so heavy doing in grad school and even now, right? Like my job is still as a professor to be very heady, to be, you know, very much in my intellectual brain. So when I come home, I just want to be able to turn that off. And yet <laughs> I always say I can't turn it off a hundred percent, right? Once you gain the skill of being able to critically analyze something, um, it, it's really hard to turn it off, right? Like once you see something, once you see, you know, things and yeah, just there's that language or that skill of, of critical analysis. And once you learn that, it, and especially if it's part of your job and part of something you do all the time, um, it's hard to turn it off completely, right? Um, so even when I was watching the years and years and years that I've been watching Real Housewives, I would watch it and just kind of like, oh, la, la, la. But in the back of my mind, I'd have a whole, you know, analysis <laughs> about not just like the show itself and like the content itself and like what's happening in the show, because I would start to notice patterns of different things and like put those in context with what I know about society in general and like these larger, you know, um, themes of, of social constructs, right? So things about like women and things about um, marriage dynamics and social dynamics and all the things, right? Like, um, and so in the back of my mind, I would always be kind of doing that, but also really thinking about like, regardless of what's actually happening on the show, there's also an impact that the show has on the audience, right? And like, how are the audience, how is the audience, how are the viewers engaging with the show and what is it like, how has it impacted society, right? So this idea of like, is it, you know, art imitating life or is it life imitating art or is it this like, you know, cyclical relationship, um, which I think that's actually what it is. Um, but just kind of, yeah, like, I, again, I obviously I can't shut it off, right? Like I'm always having these like dialogues in my head of like, ooh, this is like, this is what's happening here. And let's like unpack this and let's dissect this. And it was always just kind of an internal dialogue, right? Um, I'm thinking right now of Sex in the City and how much I loved Sex in the City when I was in my 20s. And um, and now I can really kind of look back on it and like, mm, yeah, there was a lot of problematic stuff. And at the same time, recognize that the impact that it had on me in my 20s was a positive thing, right? So we can kind of cr understand um, both the content of, you know, any kind of media image or representation um, you know, in relation to our, you know, relationship with it as an audience, right? As a viewer, as a listener, right? If we're talking about things like music. So there's just this like nuanced relationship to these things. And again, I'm always like doing that in my head. And so I thought, it's time. <laughs> it's time to put that out into the world. It's time to 
let all those conversations that I'm having with myself, you know, play out to the public. Um, and I do this a lot in my classes, right? Like I'll say, oh, let's look at an image, you know, if we're talking about a theme of like gender roles, right? And we can look at a particular, you know, representation of gender in, in the media and like use this um, representation as a way to unpack you know, these larger concepts around gender roles and gender expectations, right? So I'm always kind of doing that in my classes. But then there's also the chismosa in me, <laughs> right? So there's like the critical analysis part that I love. And that is just kind of always a part of my life. But there's also the chismosa that like, oh, my God, can you believe what happened on this show, right? It's very much in the vein of, for those of us who are mothers or grandmothers watch novelas, right? And when they would talk about their novelas, it was like you thought they were talking about somebody they knew <laughs> because that's how much they were like enmeshed, right, in these stories of the novelas. And I think that that's kind of my relationship to reality TV where it's like, oh, my God, did you see what just happened, right? Um, and so it's that kind of like chismosa, but also critical and, you know, analytical relationship to media that I've had and that I want to be able to share with all of you, right? Um, partly because, you know, in, in the feedback that we get in... Um, in, in for Las Doctoras podcast, right? It's like, because we bring this, you know, expertise as gender studies, you know, ethnic studies professors, and we kind of are able to have this, you know, language around things. Um, and it sort of helps people to like understand certain things and gives people, you know, um, gives folks permission to like name things, you know, yeah, that's sexist or yeah, that's racist, right? Like at best, that's what we do as professors is give our students or give people who are listening to us um, permission to be able to name, you know, these dynamics in their life. And I think similarly, I kind of want to bring some of that into pop culture and into, into media because, you know, again, some people think of it as like frivolous, but it really isn't, right? Like, so much of our world and our life. And actually, this was my dissertation, let me tell you. Okay, always coming full circle with things, right? Um, because way back, you know, when even when I decided not to become a journalist outright, um, I was still like, how can I make my love of TV, film, pop culture, like, how can I, how can I make that, you know, into my job? Like, <laughs> how do I, and, and so, so much of my graduate work, so much of my work as a scholar has been in the realm of media, right? So my dissertation was looking at representations of Latinas in the media and how that impacts identity formation, particularly for young Latinas, right? Um, and so I did a whole chapter where I did textual analysis of all kinds of different films including TV shows like The Real Housewives and Jersey Shore and Bad Girls Club and I'm um, like, what else? The Bachelor, right? Like, so pop culture has always been something that I've loved in my life, but also kind of been part of my scholarship. Um, and again, I've kind of disperse that here and there in all the different avenues of, of work that I do, but I really wanted to like create a very specific space to be able to bring you all my analysis and then, you know, to have you all kind of engage with that, right? And think like, um, have us all really thinking critically <laughs> so that we're engaging, right, in a much more conscious way with the media that we're watching. And I think that's even why there are some shows that I've gotten away from because I'm like, oh, I don't know if, I don't know. There's just some things I have, you know, which again, I'll get into um, at some point in different episodes. But, um, but yeah, I just want to be able to do something fun, like being able to chismear about all the shows that I watch. But from a critical perspective, like I love to be able to do that, right? And I think we can, I think that's like the best of what I do. Um, and I think that's kind of the best things in life, right? Like we can like take the things that we enjoy and have fun with, but also like understand them from a critical perspective, um, you know, so that we're engaging in, in conscious ways. And, you know, like my husband would always say when I watch reality TV, like, you know, that that's not real. And so much of it is scripted. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm not invested in it, because it's real, right? Like, I'm not, it doesn't really matter to me. It's just a way to get lost, right? Um, in someone else's life, but then also have it be like a reflection of like, 
you know, is this society? And, and if this is a reflection of where our society is, then we've got to have some conversations, right? Um, I'm thinking about, um, I'm just thinking about some of the things that I've observed on di the different franchises of The Real Housewives, where you see these, um, particularly those who are like married, and you see the way that these marriages play out and, you know, the different gendered expectations. And, you know, these women are on this like large platform. And so, so many women are watching them. And when they're kind of playing into sometimes these gender stereotypes, um, or the, or maybe not that they're playing into those, but the gender stereotypes are playing out, you know, in these shows, you're like, Ooh, like it can be a little mm, scary maybe <laughs> for that to be sort of the model. Right. Um, let's, you know, again, all of this I'm going to explore right throughout the, throughout the, the podcast and different episodes, but like the Kardashians, right? Like if the Kardashians were just this like fictional show or this, character or whatever like that's one thing like I don't really have a problem with them as this thing that lives on TV but the fact that so many people watch them as these like role models and so many people want to be like them like they are the ultimate influencers that's where it gets problematic right because however they want to live their lives you know in their own delusion of whatever alternative reality they live in you know, to each their own, but the fact that they have such a large audience and without any kind of critical analysis or engagement, it, it it's a little alarming, right? Like, ooh, like how are people, how are audience, how is the audience really engaging with this? Are, do they have, are they able to separate themselves or, or do they get lost in like, this is some kind of reality that we should aspire to, right? Like, so I think it's like that, right? It's, just being able to have those conversations, right? I love it. Like, I'm like, I'm ready to get into it. Like, let's talk about the Kardashians. Um, let's talk about Vanderpump rules, right? Like, really, that was the the nail in the coffin for me. I was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm ready to dive into if anyone's been paying attention. Like, I'm ready. I've been a Vanderpump rules fan since the very beginning. Um, and so, like, I'm ready to tell you what I think about it, right? If anyone cares, <laughs> if anyone cares what I think about the Kardashians or what I think about The Bachelor, you know, knowing what you know about me and, you know, where I'm coming from and what my perspective is, like, I'm ready. I'm ready to share my thoughts. I'm ready to share my ideas, um, my analysis. So, yeah, that's what this podcast is. La Feminista, right? The Feminist Pop Culture Podcast all things podcast media. And I do want to say, like, I think there's so many podcasts out there that do touch on pop culture, um, you know, to the fullest extent. And I'm, I, I would not consider myself like, you know, <laughs> like I don't watch every single thing and I don't pay attention to every single thing because I also have a life and kids and things. Um, because I've, you know, I've, I've been kind of going on a deep dive in different podcasts and I'm like, oh my God, they are really into like all of these things and that's fine. I'm not necessarily going to be bringing you like the latest pop culture things, but rather I'm going to be engaging with pop culture from like a critical perspective with obviously a little bit of fun and, you know, my chismosa personality thrown in there. But so I'm excited. I'm excited to um, bring you some episodes. Um, I I know that there's a lot that I have to say. So I'm imagining right now that of the first you know few episodes are going to be just me kind of talking through you know what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, I do maybe hope to bring on some guests. And I mean, there are some friends that I'm like, ooh, it would be fun to like let's have a talk about you know this or whatever. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of letting it evolve as it does, you know, as, as, you know, if you know me from Las Doctoras podcast, you know, that that's kind of <laughs> our MO is like, let's just see what happens. Let's experiment. Let's explore. Um, but I know that for me, this has been a long time coming, you know, really wanting to, um, put out to there to the public, like, you know, these are my skills, right? I love me some pop culture and I love to be, you know, critically analyzing things and I love to be a chismosa. So that's where you'll find me at the intersection of, you know, intersectional feminist criticism, um, a love of pop culture, and a love of cheese man. <laughs> so thank you. And um, this is, you know, our introductory episode. So hopefully going to be ready to put um, 
we'll be putting out the first episode very soon. Um, so you can follow me um, at Las Doctoras on Instagram. Um, maybe in some name changes, currently kind of working on some name changes right on Instagram for myself. But here I am, ready. I'll catch you on the first episode. Bye.